We stole moments in the frantic pace of our work and rolled our chairs into the spaces between our cubicles. We shared raw stories, not the nice version for court or the abridged version for our supervisors. Here, we could laugh in places we shouldn't, cry out of anger and weakness, and curse injustice and inadequacies. Telling stories has always helped me get over things when my heart hurts. I left for a while. By the time I got back to social work, professionalization, standardization, and a focus on the bottom line made enemies of reflection and storytelling. Like when Stacy chose to end her own life. I worked with her an hour or two at a time four times a week for two years. She was trying to weave out of what she described as bare threads, a different kind of cloth. Then one day she decided she was ready to cut the cloth. She was taken to hospital. They sent her home. No beds for the frequent flyer. She died later that night at home in bed with her dog the contents of her stomach in her lungs. Her presence in our work was replaced for a while with an investigation. There was concern about liability. An official story of what happened was developed. The story went from Stacy's trouble to the trouble with Stacy. We were forbidden to talk about her, but for me, the story wasn't over. She visited me in my dreams and when I tried to be quiet, but now it was unprofessional to speak about her. I had been silenced and the silence ate my confidence from the inside out. It's made me long for the time when I could lean on my team in the spaces outside of the cubicles. There is no tick box that makes me feel the way a story can. There is no risk matrix that makes my pulse rise or my heart swell or my throat ache like a story can. Stories are a salve for my social work heart. <laughs>